hear ye! It is the year 1594. How's it going, everyone? Equinox Phoenix here. Today, we're going to talk about The Legends of Tomorrow, Season 5, Episode 7, titled Romeo v. Juliet, Dawn of Justness. Uh, obviously, the name comes from Romeo and Juliet and Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. Um... It is, we now, we start the episode with newlyweds, Raymond and Nora Palmer, I guess. Um, of course, you know, we know last episode, Ray and Nora got married. The newlyweds, of course, um, Ray is thinking about his promise to Damien Dark. And amongst other things, he's... Looking back at the memories of his time as a legend, and he tells Nora that he's made the decision. Obviously, it's not a forced decision. Um, Nora says she will stay with him wherever he decides to go when he brings up wanting to leave the ship. He says he can't be her, her husband, like, full-time with one foot in the past, which is true. They're constantly traveling to the past of present day. Uh... We have not gone into the future as of yet, with the exception of Sarah to pick up Mia for Oliver's funeral. <sighs> but that's Arrow, we've talked about that already. <sighs> Ray, of course, manages to tell everyone but Nate. And along with us going to 1594, as said in the little fun intro thing I did in earlier... Um, we meet Shakespeare. It turns out the first piece of the Loom of Fate, Charlie left it with William Shakespeare. The man, the myth, the legend himself. The father of modern storytelling. The f many other titles that we can give him. Um, right before he finishes Romeo and Juliet, oddly enough, um, we find out that was a Shakespeare uh, that Shakespeare has left the ring with I guess the owner of the theater company or something like that I don't know who he is exactly uh, m m my details on William Shakespeare's life are a little fuzzy it's been 10 years <laughs> since I last learned about him um, but I believe it's just the owner of the theater company he, he does plays for now of course this is as collateral essentially because he needs more time to finish Romeo and Juliet. Of course, Charlie sneaks it off while the guys are planning, uh, sneaks the ring, uh, it, tur it, it was turned into a ring. Uh, of course, Charlie sne sneaks the ring away from him, uh, while the guys are all planning how we're gonna destroy the ring, and all this side, oh, let's do a bachelor party for Ray, right? That's not gonna end badly, right? Well, the girls, uh, also, at the same time, are holding a bachelorette party for Court, uh, I was gonna say Courtney Ford. Nora, that's the uh, Courtney Ford is the actress. Um, yeah, but yeah, so Nora uh, gets a bachelorette party. Uh, obviously, the guys screw up, uh, as is the legends want to do in the beginning of an episode. Uh, they change Romeo and Juliet to Romeo versus Juliet, Dawn of Justness. We see that. And Nora's the first one to notice it, and she's like, turn off the music, so Gideon, of course, you know, being in control of the music, shuts off the music. And she's like, what is going on? Like, this doesn't look right. Like, I'm pretty sure the guys are in trouble. It turns out the guys messed up. Nate, for some, I think it was Nate, for some reason, memory wipes everybody from, like, the crew instead of Shakespeare. And so, it, it, it just... Obviously, this, uh, that's the reason why it, it, the title was changed. Now they're superheroes, and it's no longer a tragedy. And now, the team is stuck trying to um, convince uh, Shakespeare that he needs to write Romeo and Juliet as it was intended, and not how it's written currently because of the mess-up. In the process of convincing Shakespeare to let the characters die, 
Nate finds out that Ray is leaving. And, of course, Nate is upset. Justifiably so, his best friend is leaving and didn't tell him. He told a complete utter stranger before he told him. So, obviously, you know, Nate is upset and he goes off on Ray. And... He's upset. We, we get it. He goes off on Ray and tells him, you know what? You want to leave, then you can leave. We'll handle it without you, right? The mission, fixing the mission, and all of that. And they go on to play the parts of Romeo and Juliet. <sighs> Here's the thing. Apparently, Zari, in the current timeline, I, I, knows Romeo and Juliet by heart. And is a pretty good actress as well. Uh, not something I expected of... The glam queen, uh, because, you know, she spends apparently, like, a ridiculously long time glamming up every morning, and it, it it's, it's a whole thing we saw at the beginning of the episode, um, but apparently she knows Romeo and Juliet, so she at least has, um, a decent education, like, I, honestly, up until Zari took on the role of Juliet, the play was really bad. It was really cringy. Um, it was good, but also really cringy. Um, it wasn't well acted, with the exception of Zari. Uh, and Constantine, actually. Oddly enough, Constantine and Zari are the two best... Um, actors within that for, for that play. Out of the entire crew. Like, you'd think the assassin would be the, would be the good actor, or... Ava, who's... Ah, well, no, Ava's... Ava's Ava. Of, of course, she's not a good actor. Uh, that, that, that's actually not surprising. But, yeah, so apparently Zari can act. And, of course, Zari took on uh, Nate's place as Juliet. Yeah, they had Nate be Juliet originally. Um, so that Nate can go and rush to say goodbye to Ray properly. And to apologize for going off on him. Now, of course, um, he almost misses him i know they end up saying goodbye properly so i'm gonna say they almost miss him i don't know if he misses him and then ray decides to backtrack i believe nate almost misses ray and nora and so they they have like a tear felt hug filled goodbye and honestly i'm gonna miss ray he was a great character uh they at the end of the mission once everything is all fixed and said and done um they all toast to Ray, to the big man, as Nate called him. Or the big guy, I believe, is what he said. Uh, with Ray's green juice? It, it's... It apparently doesn't taste very well and makes you really nauseous. Uh, or at least it did for everyone else. Um, but yeah, that's the final send-off for Ray Palmer. He's... The neither Courtney Ford nor uh, Brandon Ruth, I believe, is the actor for Raymond Palmer. I always forget his name. Um, Brandon Ruth are series regulars now. They are now a here and there appearance if they if they even show up at all. Honestly, this episode was amazing. I loved it. It was great. It was very lively. And it made me miss watching theater performances, because I did do that in middle school and elementary school, and a little bit in high school, but I dropped off on it, uh, or my anxiety and depression hit really hard, uh, in 2010, and it just kept getting worse and worse, I just had no motivation. I may, once I move out of my current living, uh, situation, see about seeing theater, going to theater performances again, but, uh, overall, this episode was amazing. Tell me what you guys thought of it down in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit like, hit subscribe if you're new. I will see you guys next time, and as always, stay bright.